great pleasure for me to welcome Dr. Eric Beckman, who is one of the world's best known infrared astronomers. And as you would have guessed, Eric has been flying on this day. The predecessor of this plane was called the Kuiper Airborne Observatory, which also came to Christchurch seven or eight times. I think Eric's best known for a famous object called the Beckman Neugebauer object, a massive star in Orion, star forming region, completely surrounded by dust and a huge infrared emitter but uh, completely invisible at optical wavelengths. So one of the brightest infrared objects in the sky is named after Eric. I'm Eric Becklin. I'm the uh, Chief Science Advisor on SOFIA. I'm also Professor Emeritus at UCLA, and I have done uh, infrared astrophysics for the last almost 50 years. SOFIA is a stratospheric observatory for infrared astronomy. It has a long history uh, within NASA and NASA Airborne Science. But it is basically a two and a half meter telescope. That's a huge telescope. It's one of the world's biggest. Uh, and it flies on a 747 SP aircraft. So it brings two very interesting sciences together. Flying a telescope in an airplane is really, truly exciting. There was tremendous engineering that had to be uh, brought together. Uh, we talk mostly about the telescope as being great engineering. And of course, the instruments are also great engineering. We put the latest and greatest detectors that can detect the most minute new line or image uh, of what is out there. But the aircraft itself also had to be engineered. And uh, to get that whole, there was major, we had to do wind tunnel tests. We had to get the shape of the aircraft just right and they did so well that when they open the door on Sophia the pilots can't tell if the door is opened or closed it's uh, that well designed a marvelous engineering feat the whole thing the telescope the aircraft and the instruments all coming together we have a 20-year lifetime we'll be coming down to New Zealand every year because this is such a great site and over 20 years, we will be making tremendous discoveries right here from New Zealand. Part of SOFIA's program is an education and public outreach, and as part of that, we fly school teachers. I think it's very important, personally, that, that New Zealand have school teachers flying on SOFIA, so they can bring back the experience to the classroom. New Zealand is a very special place. It's out here in the Pacific, it actually, you can see the southern sky and there are things you cannot see from the north that you can see down here. And that's the, the main purpose to come south. But then New Zealand itself is an isolated island, very easy to fly around. And with Sophia, when you pick your target, you have to go in a certain path. And if you're up in uh, the northern hemisphere, either in Europe or in the uh, North America, you have to get all the countries agreements this time of year when a lot of things are up in the sky here in the south it's actually very dry up in the stratosphere because it's winter down here it is just colder and drier and so you have this big ocean you have a very dry stratosphere you get up into it very easily the distance up before you hit the stratosphere here in New Zealand and to the south is actually some of the lowest that's known on Earth, under 10 kilometers, and you're in the stratosphere here in, uh, in the southern hemisphere in the winter. That's a very important aspect of uh, why we're here. Water vapor is important for us because water is a molecule that likes to twist and turn, and when it twists and turns, it actually absorbs radiation very well. And so we actually don't get much radiation where in, in, in from the infrared due to water. Water actually blocks it. But if we get up in the stratosphere, it's kind of like opening up. So it's like going from a cloudy day in the visible to a clear day. And that's really why we go up in Sophia. We get that clear skies in the infrared. Sophia does navigate by the stars, that's exactly right. 
and we look at the very core of the Milky Way. We also look at uh, a region north of Scor Scorpio called Ophiuchus, and uh, those are all famous regions where we make observations. Uh, and so coming down here, we get a view, particularly the very core of the Milky Way. That's something I have also observed over my uh, career. And uh, to come down here and to be able to observe the core of our galaxy uh, all night long is very, very special. It, it started uh, back in the, uh, the uh, 60s. And I usually give credit to uh, Frank Lowe, who was an astronomer from the University of Arizona. He uh, really wanted to, to fly uh, Learjet to get infrared observations. His colleague at the University of Arizona, Gerard Kuiper, actually did the first astronomical observations, not on a Learjet, but on a 990 uh, aircraft back in the early 60s. The telescope, as I said, is two and a half meters in diameter, as big as a, a huge kitchen table, and uh, is like a normal telescope that many of you might have in your backyard. The difference, of course, is uh, when you're in your backyard, you have a nice stable platform. Here, uh, you don't have a stable platform, you have the aircraft. So it has many features that, that uh, are very unique. A uh, big bearing that can track across the sky. It has to have gyroscopes. Space observatories also have to have gyroscopes. They tell you where it should be pointed. Then there are large motors that run in parallel with that those gyroscopes and uh, they work together as a unit and uh, it's called a control system. It was actually developed by the military for uh, shooting guns off of airplane and uh, ships and it uh, just works extremely well in Sofia. That bearing is a big part of it. We are probably the biggest gunship. <laughs> it's not a gunship, but in terms of weight, we're 10 metric tons uh, on the bearing. So it's a huge telescope and an, a huge airplane, actually. The 740 SP is a huge aircraft. The SP aircraft is very special, even here to New Zealand. This aircraft has been here before. It was part of the Pan Am fleet that uh, flew to New Zealand, made especially by Boeing to fly all the way from Los Angeles and San Francisco to Auckland. So this is the uh, Sophia telescope on the back side. Uh, the real business side is on the other side, that's the mirror. Uh, the radiation comes in, hits the primary mirror, goes up to another mirror, uh, then goes to a flat mirror and then comes out and then all of the radiation is detected by this uh, instrument. It's called the Great Instrument. So this is the observatory. They're preparing now uh, for uh, a flight tonight, uh, including uh, putting cryogens into the uh, cryostat. Well, my, my favorite discovery is actually something that I worked on uh, for years. And when we first uh, got Sophia operational, there had been a source in Orion that uh, had been, I had discovered as a uh, graduate student. And it uh, main remained a mystery actually as to what was going on. We looked at it with the Kuiper, but the Kuiper just had blurry vision basically. When we looked at it with Sophia, we got clarity that we could see actually what was going on there. And it was just wonderful to see this. That to me is the greatest discovery of Sophia for me. But I started studying the stars when I was a graduate student at Caltech, and I just fell in love with it. I love it, fell in love with the observing, and uh, I flew on the Kuiper, and then I fell in love with airborne astronomy, the uniqueness that, of the experiments that you can do. I've also done space experiments. They're, all, they're great, you get great data, but they don't have the passion that you get when you actually go up in an aircraft and combine the astronomy with the aircraft. SOFIA will make discoveries. We don't know what they will be yet. It has the ability to study molecules in space. Molecules are what we are made out of. It's also interested in dust, and of course we came from dust as well. So 
it's 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 all about trying to to bring together uh, what's out there to what we have here on earth it's our natural tendency as humans to want to go and ask what is out in space that's what i am about and as part of that we do need to go out there as well all of the technology we have these cameras and such brings us together it doesn't split us apart we're doing better and better all the time no we are going to do fine we need to protect our earth obviously this is a very precious resource but we also need to explore and understand why we're here there are secrets out there in space about how we came about and uh, we are not going to necessarily solve those issues of where we came from but we are going to get a lot more information and Sophia is going to be a key part of it over its 20-year lifetime I just want to thank the people in New Zealand for allowing us to come and use your facilities here. It's just uh, great and the hospitality has been outstanding and uh, I just want to thank you all.